As we all know, the Cleveland Cavaliers need to make some sort of a move before the NBA trade deadline February the 9th happens. What's the right move for the Cleveland Cavaliers that helps them compete for an NBA championship this year? Heck, as a matter of fact, they're just trying to get out of the Eastern Conference right now as Boston Celtics are number one, Toronto Raptors are number two, and Cleveland is barely holding on to number three with Miami Heat trailing them. It's getting close in the Eastern Conference. Now, the likely move for the Cleveland Cavaliers is to go after a star player with an expiring contract. A team will be looking to part ways with one of these guys if they know they can't re-sign them after this season or not going to want to re-sign them if they're heading into rebuild mode. Guys like DeMarcus Cousins, Marcus Saul, Lou Williams, you might hear guys like that on the market, especially if you're a team that's at the bottom of your conference right now and you know it's not an ideal situation to give 200 to 220 million dollars on a new max deal. Speaking of guys that are heading into NBA free agency this summer, DeAndre Jordan's one of those guys. And I like DeAndre Jordan, the basketball player, but I don't think he's the right fit for the Cleveland Cavaliers if they're going to make a deadline move and trade that Brooklyn pick that's oh so coveted around the association. Here's five reasons why. If I'm the Cavs, I'm not trading for DeAndre Jordan. At reason number one, it's obvious he can't score without great passers. And the Cavs currently have a point guard who doesn't pass. DeAndre Jordan has been at his best when Chris Paul has been getting him the basketball in great spots. As a matter of fact, Blake Griffin's a pretty good passer as well. DeAndre Jordan gets most of his points off dunks around the rim, putbacks. This is who he is. You can't put him in the post and expect him to come out with a basket. Heck, Charles Barkley once said, if I left DeAndre Jordan in a gym overnight and I tell him he couldn't dunk or lay it in, he wouldn't score six baskets. It's funny. But it's kind of true. DeAndre Jordan just can't shoot. That's not a part of his game. His game is based on athleticism and being able to jump at the rim and make plays around it. Isaiah Thomas doesn't pass the basketball like Chris Paul. He's nowhere close. As a matter of fact, if Isaiah Thomas could, he passed that thing to himself and shoot. Yes, LeBron James can pass the basketball, but the Cavs are looking to get Isaiah Thomas more involved, even bringing the ball up and down the court with LeBron James being more of a scoring threat in the playoffs. Isaiah Thomas is not going to get it done, especially with a guy like DeAndre Jordan when he needs the passes to be pinpoint for him to score. Speaking of scoring, DeAndre Jordan can't shoot free throws. Why is this so important? Well, if you look at the other teams that are likely to be in the NBA Finals or in the Eastern Conference Finals, a la the Boston Celtics, who's their coach? Brad Stevens. A la the Golden State Warriors, who's their coach? Steve Kerr. San Antonio Spurs, even, who's their coach? Greg Popovich. Heck, Houston Rockets, who's their coach? Mike D'Antoni. All these coaches believe in the hack shack method, which is just fouling a player as long as you're outside of two minutes left in the quarter. And if the team is in the bonus, you can make a, a poor free throw shooter, a career under 50% free throw shooter like DeAndre Jordan go to the line, especially in the playoffs when the game slows down. And a guy like DeAndre Jordan, literally, we've seen it happen in the past. He can change the landscape of a game by just missing four to five free throws at a time. It gets into his head and now he's two for 12 at the line and he's pretty much giving up six possessions for your team. That's not good. Reason number three. His contract ends after the season. He's not staying in Cleveland. If you're the Cavs, yes, you do want to go after a championship this year. But is it really worth it if LeBron James leaves you anyway? If you don't win a championship anyway and LeBron leaves, now you don't have that Brooklyn pick. And DeAndre Jordan looks up and is like, oh, LeBron's gone? Why in the heck am I staying in Cleveland? He's probably going to take that max money elsewhere. As a matter of fact, reason number four is... He wants to be in Houston. He'll probably take that max money and go to Houston. It was reported by Stephen A. Smith last week that DeAndre Jordan really, really wants to get to Houston, play back with Chris Paul and join James Harden, and maybe compete against the Golden State Warriors for years to come in Houston. If he wants to be in Houston, if his mind is already set on it, he's going to get to Houston. Chris Paul, one of his close friends, they're going to find a way to make that happen. If he wants to be in Houston and he doesn't want to stay in Cleveland like most talented NBA players, he's going to leave after the year, probably if you win a championship or not. And the Cavs can't afford to start at ground zero again like they did when LeBron James took his talent to South Beach back in 2010. My last and final reason, and most important, 
to the Cavs and their success, especially to LeBron James. If the Cavs do find a way to get back to the NBA Finals and they compete against the Golden State Warriors with DeAndre Jordan, Draymond Green can defend him. We all know it's about winning in Cleveland when you got LeBron James on your team. DeAndre Jordan causes no matchup problems for the Warriors. Draymond Green, who's a very smart basketball player, high IQ guy, will simply not allow DeAndre Jordan to get 20 rebounds in the finals. Maybe DeAndre gets 10, 11 rebounds, but I guarantee if he gets those rebounds and tries to put it back up, he's going to get fouled. The Warriors have bodies. They got Draymond. They got Zaza Pachulia. They got JaVale McGee. They got Jordan Bell, who's athletic in his own right. The Warriors have bodies. And one of the smartest coaches in the last 10 years is Steve Kerr. He's going to use everybody he has to keep DeAndre Jordan off the boards. I don't think any basketball analyst in their right mind believes if the Cavs get DeAndre Jordan for that Brooklyn pick, or and Tristan Thompson maybe, no one believes that that's putting them over the top against the Golden State Warriors. Maybe with DeAndre, they win one game? Maybe. But with all that being said and done, if you get swept or win one game in the finals, you're going to lose DeAndre Jordan. You're probably going to lose LeBron James. And you got to start this thing all over. I don't think DeAndre Jordan is the missing piece to this Cavalier puzzle. And it's a very complicated puzzle right now. I don't think DeAndre Jordan fixes enough problems to go out and trade that Brooklyn pick for you. I'd rather keep what I got and lose to Golden State with the pick and be able to draft me maybe a Marvin Bagley, maybe a Trey Young, maybe a Michael Porter. I'm not using that pick on a rental in DeAndre Jordan. He's not worth the rental if you're the Cleveland Cavaliers.